Uh, hello, everybody. It's great to be here at uh, Cloud Village. And in the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk about static analysis of infrastructure as code. Um, just as a side note, uh, if you're interested in contributing to any of those open source projects around AWS security, IAM security, infrastructure as code, or Google Cloud, uh, feel free to reach out. It's Barack Shoster at Twitter or just follow my activity at GitHub. I really like to work on open source projects and it is, it is one of the things that is great about BridgeCrew that is contributing more and more open source security tooling back to the community. All right, so on the agenda today, we're going to talk about the state of open source Terraform modules. Are they secured or not? Uh, we'll go over how to run Chekhov uh, using two different integrations, pre-commit hook and CI deployment. And at the end of this talk, you should be able to just download Chekhov and run it on your own manifests. Before diving into deployment, let's uh, talk about the problem space. As engineers uh, like myself and, and probably you who are listening, uh, our goal is to move faster and in much agile way. Um, and when we develop a new product, we need uh, some way to deploy the infrastructure that this product runs on. Infrastructure as code came to the world uh, to help us um, just do all of this manual work at the cloud providers like the AWS, Azure, GCP consoles of setting up a VM automatically and having this job of setting those instances reproducible, version controlled, um, and peer reviewed. Since it, for the first time it's in code, you can peer review it as a pull request or merge request in your VCS. Uh, when you are working fast, you're producing probably more code and with more code comes more bugs. Um, so in a lot of times when you want to just provision a new cloud resource, let's take S3, for example, you might miss some of the default configurations and keep the S3 unencrypted by default or without versioning or without access logs. And the same goes for other resources like compute resources. Uh, you might forget access keys in your plain text environment variables instead of using a secured store. And, and when you're copying pre-made templates from the internet that are unvetted, those issues might repeat more and more. Um, so Gartner said, and this is uh, often quoted, that 95 of the cloud security issues are related to configurations errors. Um, and the trend that is being done at the past two or three years, I know that Terraform exists for a little more than seven years, is that we are codifying each and every activity that we're doing in YAML files, HCL files, etc. cetera. Um, the, this tooling, the, those manifests that we write the infrastructure as code are about provisioning new resources in a reproducible way and about managing them. But it lacks the security functionality or best practices vetting functionality. And there are some great tools around this area. There is OPA, the Open Policy Agent of the CNCF, and also Chekhov, TFSEC, CFNMAG. Each of those is tackling the problem from a different angle. So let's talk about the problem that we're trying to solve using Chekhov, which is open source and under Apache 2 license. What we try to understand is, is the default configuration of any kind of infrastructure as code manifest, meaning Kubernetes, Terraform, CloudFormation, serverless framework, uh, et cetera, is secured by default. So we asked ourselves that question. Uh, let's, let's scan as, as first um, open source modules um, of those cloud manifests. So we decided to use Chekhov to scan, to scan thousands of open source repositories. Uh, before diving into the results, uh, there are some interesting stats about the trend of contributing and creating new 
infrastructure models. And this is focused only on Terraform modules. So back in 2017, 18, and 19, we had a mild growth um, in the amount of new open source modules contributed around Terraform. And specifically at the COVID era, around February, probably due to uh, work from home productivity benefits, the contributions of new modules went sky high, which is great. We love open source, more code that someone else is writing is less code for me to write. But the thing is, the more code that is being contributed, the more misconfigs that are being um, found in the open source repositories. So 48% uh, of those modules have some kind of misconfiguration. So if we take about 2,500 um, modules, we'll see a lot of misconfigs there. And those open source modules by GitHub statistics had more than 26 million downloads. And that's a lot of downloads of misconfigured EC2 instances, S3 bucket, etc. So just to make things clear, writing code in Terraform does not mean that it's insecure. It's the other way around. Uh, Terraform gives the ability to peer review the infrastructure's code and to have an impact on the configuration before provisioning. The thing is, is that this practice of reviewing this infrastructure configuration is still not in place in a lot of organizations. And what we see is that backup and recovery is very often missed. Logging and auditing, encryption, Kubernetes configuration um, are also missed. You can understand Kubernetes that has so many knobs and switches, but encryption should really be turned on by default on most of the uh, cloud services. And if we break it down to the different uh, cloud vendors, we can see that there is a, uh, a different uh, missing piece on all of those open source modules. For example, in Google, there is a lot of, there is often misconfigured networking um, piece, while on AWS, Kubernetes is the most often a misconfigured code. So where do those bad configurations come from usually? So you can copy them from a blog post, from Terraform registry, from GitHub, um, from your internal repository where you probably have a platform team creating those manifests. And it's really not, usually it's not as a result of a bad actor, but merely lack of knowledge or lack of time uh, of all of those best practices. You have over 160 services only on AWS and the list of their configurations grows on and on. So it's really a lot to miss and a lot to be familiar with as a DevOps, SRE or platform engineer. And here comes Chekhov. So Chekhov was released on December, 2019. Um, it already had has a um, more than 1,000 GitHub stars, 600,000 downloads, tons of best opinionated best practices that comes with, within it. So more than 400 checks that are opinionated but are, are based on the CIS benchmark, SOC2, PCI, and other best practices. And it has uh, a bunch of CI/CD integrations. So, what, what Chekhov is doing is giving you a policy as code. It gives you the ability to define a best practice and to version the best practice itself. Where this policy, for example, make sure everything is encrypted by default, can be peer reviewed, can be automated as part of this software development lifecycle. And specifically in Chekhov, we decided that policies should be written in a familiar language like Python. So let's take this example. We have here a Terraform block that defines a database. And what is missing here is that storage is not encrypted by default on the specific database configuration. How would a checkoff policy look like? Uh, well, when creating a custom policy, um, you can give it a name, an identifier, the type of resource that you would like to inspect, which is AWS DB instance, a category, which is encryption, and the scan itself is just, let's 
look for storage encrypted and make sure that it equals true. If it does, let's pass it. Otherwise, let's fail the check. And Chekhov is doing all of the wrapping of making a very clear reporting option, um, a very clear CI integration. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look on how does that look like on, on a CLI. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate Chekhov on a vulnerable by design uh, project called Terragoat. And if we will have time, uh, we'll do the same for Kubernetes Goat and CloudFormation Goat. So let's, uh, let's spin up the demo. All right. So what I have here um, is uh, just a very simple terminal. I'm using Mac. Before this talk, I have executed a brew install Chekhov or pip install Chekhov. Both would work for you. And what I have here are those three projects of vulnerable by design infrastructure. Uh, but even on regular open source module, you're, you will likely find a misconfig. So um, let's go dive in into Terragoat and take a look on the project structure. So I have a Terraform directory that has resources among the three cloud providers, specifically on AWS. I have a Terraform uh, file for S3 buckets. So over here, I have a bucket that is public, not encrypted, without access log and without versioning. And I have another file for EC2 instances that has plain text access keys. But if I wouldn't tell you that, it would have taken you a lot of time to make sure to make to to see that. So let's run Chekhov and see what it can do. So the basic parameter is minus D. As choosing a directory that Chekhov will scan the infrastructure's code for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan the AWS directory and see how the results look like. So it should take a few seconds. And what Chekhov have found here is 58 passing checks, meaning 58 times that uh, cloud resources were with best practices on. And 53 fail checks. So over here, I can see all of those uh, passing use cases so I have here a database application that is not open on RDP port, which is good. They've done some good work. But if I want to look on the bad things that it have found, so over here I have a bucket that is not encrypted at rest, and this is why we have a failed uh, check. Um, and the resource is defined between one line 1 and 13, and I can see it here. And I can see that there is no encryption block. I've also written it to myself as a comment. And if I'll take a look on, on the next set of resources uh, that are right after S3, uh, here I have an unencrypted RDS, and it, that is publicly accessible. And also um, plain text access keys found in this EC2 block. Here they are. Uh, why is bad uh, plain text access keys bad? Because they are often used for crypto mining attack. People can take those access keys and deploy a crypto miner. And basically, my AWS bill will go up and up and up. All right. So we have installed Chakov using pip install. We've executed it on our local director of AWS. And we found a bunch of issues that we should solve. Um, but that, that was like a one-time execution. How do I make sure? that Chekhov will run on each and every change that I'm doing to my infrastructure as code. And I want Chekhov to tell me, hey, you have this specific issue. You should solve it before committing it to your, to your GitHub account and from there to the production. So what Chekhov has is a, actually a pre-commit integration where you can do exactly that. You can configure a pre-commit hook and on that scenario, before each commit, um, Chekhov will scan your, your local directory 
your local repository and will prevent you from committing that bad code into your GitHub if it does not follow those best practices. So let's take a look on how does that look like. Um, so if I go up here and what I have configured is a pre-commit config YAML mentioning that I should run the, the latest version of Chekhov always on every commit. So what I've done before this talk is I've created a new Terraform file called S3 new, and it's not committed. Let's try to commit it. So what the pre-commit hook is doing right now is running Chekhov upon commit. And it fails my commit. I cannot push new code to my source control unless it fixes those issues that are found in my S3 new Terraform file, which is cool. Now I don't need to run Chekhov manually on each and every change. I can just uh, install the pre-commit hook and now my workstation cannot upload uh, bad S3 buckets. Cool. All right, so we have that. The misconfig is gone, and I cannot use my workstation to write bad Terraform code. But what about workstations that did not deploy a pre-commit hook in? Um, the best way to handle that use case is to install Chekhov also in your CI CD pipeline, where on each change request, pull request, Chekhov will execute as part of your CI and we'll call that Chekhov job, for example, infrastructure security tests. And it works just like any unit test where you're running application tests. You can do the same with those 400 best practices of Chekhov. Um, if Chekhov approves or if the test uh, passes, passes successfully, you can deploy your infrastructure's code to production. If Chekhov fails, on the other hand, it will block your pull request from being merged, just like unit tests that are blocked from being merged. So uh, to, to do that specific piece, um, we have uh, developed Actually, a community contributed uh, piece is a check of action. Uh, let's take a look on how, how it looks like. So if you go to bridge crew IO slash check of action, um, you, you can see a project that is contributed by this uh, handsome fellow called Chris Mavartis. Um, and to configure a check of job, a check of action uh, in your GitHub action is as simple as that. You just uh, reference uh, the specific action on your GitHub, and you can choose whether which checks to run, whether to run them all, skip a specific one, scan a specific directory, or use any of the other flags that Chekhov has. Um, and if you want, if you actually do that and enhance that into your CI pipeline assuming it's on on github action it will look like this so over here i have a pull request on a repository that demonstrate a github action of checkup so here i have created a bunch of resources to create a new web server in terraform so i have this aws instance and the github action have put have uh, added annotations to my code saying, hey, your, your AWS instance has hard-coded access keys and it's using unencrypted EBS. And I should really solve, solve those issues here in that code block. And I also have issues with my security group, which has port 22 open to the entire internet. And I should really solve that too. Um, so Chekhov will do a set of annotations for each and every resource that is violating those best practices. So 
I have this CI, pretty CI pipeline that will check each and every um, commit, not only if I'm doing that on my endpoint, but also if I'm doing that directly on GitHub or from an endpoint that does not have pre-commit hook deployed on. So what if I want to see um, the same being done for Kubernetes? Uh, so there is actually a very cool additional project, very similar to Terragoat, that is um, about Kubernetes configuration. So uh, it, it is a project created by Madhu, um, and it's called Kubernetes Goat. It has uh, some amazing scenarios of um, bad configured Kubernetes deployment manifests. Um, and it has also a great Katakoda workthrough that I really recommend doing. Uh, just to get familiar with uh, what are the best practices and bad practices when configuring a Kubernetes cluster or a job. What I have here on my local endpoint is actually um, uh, this project already cloned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Chekhov minus D, Kubernetes goat. Um, I'm going to run Chakov minus D on the scenarios directory. And I'm, I've actually created my own scenario just before this talk. And I'm going to see what the results look like. So Chakov will now do the same for, that, it, that it has done for Terraform, but now for Kubernetes manifests. So we have here uh, a bunch of issues on my deployment YAML, like a lot of them. Um, I have here uh, service account tokens uh, that are mounted not when necessary, not when necessarily. Um, I have UID conflicts. I have usage of uh, root um, uh, on my containers. And I should really solve all of those deployments configurations across my pods. Uh, the, the one thing that is nice, if you're not familiar with that specific configuration and how, what's the rationale behind it and how to solve it, um, you can always go to those uh, documentation pages uh, that Bridge Crew have publicly made accessible, uh, explaining what's the rationale behind this specific check and how to automate the remediation of that specific configuration. So let's say that you're encountering a specific config and you don't realize why you need to solve it. Here's the explanation where you have um, uh, the step-by-step -step guidelines to fix that. And obviously, if you want to, to try uh, fix that automatically, you can try the platform, but you can also use only the open source tools. As for the last piece, um, there is actually a very cool way uh, to use Chekhov for reporting mechanism, uh, just like um, uh, reporting over passing and failing unit test. Chekhov has a reach output format uh, that has JUnit XML. And if you integrate that into a CI system like AWS code build, you can actually get a very nice report showing the amount of passing and failing. And in some systems like Jenkins also show the trend over time of those uh, configurations. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, that's more or less about it on Chekhov. Uh, just to give some more references of how to use it, uh, you can always go into Chekhov.io, start on the installation page and getting started, which is the pip install piece. And right after, you have so those next chapters that explains you to you um, what are the uh, existing resource scans. Uh, so Chekhov has a list of, uh, let's see, 422 uh, best practices that are opinionated that you can execute. But if you want to ignore some of those and run only specific ones, you can always suppress uh, tests uh, that you won't like to see. For example, if you have a public bucket and it should be public for uh, website assets, 
you can just use a very similar annotation to the one that you would use for JUnit uh, test, for example, or PyTest, uh, which is check off skip, uh, mentions the check, check ID and a description of why uh, this resource uh, should not adhere these best practices. Um, so over here, I have an S3 bucket that should be public because it's a, it's a serving as a static host, uh, static hosting for a web content. Um, and you can do a very similar thing using a Kubernetes annotation um, and, and mention why you want to skip a specific check and then Chekhov will not fail on that specific check ID. Um, there is uh, some uh, documentation also of how to integrate Chekhov uh, with uh, CI systems like GitHub Actions, uh, Jenkins, GitLab CI, and also screenshots of how would that look like um, on those specific environments. All right. So if you have any questions, now would be a great time. Uh, I really encourage you to try our open source tools, follow our blog where we uh, update on those. And uh, and if you have any questions on contribution that you'd like to, to make, feel free to reach out over email or Twitter. Uh, I would be more than happy to do so. Just a quick question for me. What's next for Chekhov? Uh, any other integrations that are in the works or uh, any additional new features? Right. So we had like a bunch of um, requirements coming from the community. Some have asked for, ah, so the latest feature is actually ARM templates. We added ARM templates to Chekhov, so you can uh, use it uh, not only for Terraform um, or CloudFormation Kubernetes, but only for the, uh, also for this one. Um, and we also got requirements from the community for Ansible, um, and I think that's the big next manifest probably. Uh, we don't have any resources scheduled uh, yet to handle this one, but any contribution would be accepted. Um, and uh, yeah, it already has most of the CI integrations and a Docker, a brew install. So, so it should be pretty straightforward to use. Uh, do you think if people used Terragoat modules uh, more, this would help the number of misconfigurations to go down? So TerraGrant is a do not repeat yourself uh, framework for Terraform. It's a templating piece that helps to reduce the amount of code that we're writing. So it is, if you're writing less code, you probably create less misconfigs. But if the, the templated configuration lacks uh, the right defaults, so it will not reduce that specific piece. So the answer is yes and no. Uh, Chekhov specifically does not support TerraGrant um, completely, but it, it does show value in some cases. So if you have a TerraGrant project, I, uh, I would be more than happy to see the results of Chekhov on it. We're researching how, how to make it uh, work even better with templated um, modules.